Hello again, everyone. Welcome to our daily devotion for Tuesday, April 12, 2022. Thank you so much for spending this time with me in God's word today, as together we grow in our faith and in our knowledge of Jesus Christ as our Savior. The people of Israel have conquered their first territory. It was territory over on the east side of the Jordan River, and that conquest by the people of Israel has now um, or was very concerning to the neighboring peoples, including the king of Moab. The king of Moab's name was Balak. Balak was very concerned that this very large nation that had now conquered some neighboring nations was so close to his nation. And so Balak sent all the way to the Euphrates River for a soothsayer named Balaam. He told Balaam, come and curse this people and I will pay you. Balaam agrees to do it. And he's going to have a very interesting re interaction with the Lord. I think one of the things we're going to want to keep in mind as we watch Balaam interact with the Lord is that we need to realize Balaam was not a believer in the Lord. Uh, Balaam was a pagan. Balaam was used to dealing with all kinds of different gods uh, of the different nations. And so this Israel's God was as far as Balaam was concerned, really no different than any of the other gods that he had dealt with. Um, and throughout all of this, we're going to see Balaam trying to manipulate God, trying to get the best of God. God is going to show him in no uncertain terms that he, the Lord, is the one who is in control and Balaam can do nothing except what the Lord tells him. And so we read from Numbers chapter 22. The Israelites traveled on and camped in the plains of Moab near the Jordan across from Jericho. Now Balak, son of Zippor, saw all that Israel had done to the Amorites. Moab was terrified of the people because they were numerous, and Moab dreaded the Israelites. So the Moabites said to the elders of Midian, This horde will devour everything around us like an ox eats up the green plants in the field. Since Balak, son of Zippor, was Moab's king at that time, he sent messengers to Balaam, son of P Beor, at Pithor, which is by the Euphrates in the land of his people. Balak said to him, Look, a people has come out of Egypt. They cover the surface of the land and are living right across from me. Please come and put a curse on these people for me, because they are more powerful than I am. I may be able to defeat them and drive them out of the land. For I know that those you bless are blessed, and those you curse are cursed. The elders of Moab and Midian departed with fees for divination in hand. They came to Balaam and reported Balak's words to him. He said to them, spend the night here, and I will give you the answer the Lord tells me. So the officials of Moab stayed with Balaam. Then God came to Balaam and asked, who are these men with you? Balaam replied to God, Balak, son of Zippor, king of Moab, sent this message to me. Look, a people has come out of Egypt, and they cover the surface of the land. Now come and put a curse on them for me. I may be able to fight against them and drive them away. Then God said to Balaam, you are not to go with them. You are not to curse this people, for they are blessed. So Balaam got up the next morning and sent, said to Balak's officials, go back to your land, because the Lord has refused to let me go with you. The officials of Moab arose, returned to Balak, and reported, Balaam refused to come with us. Balak sent officials again, who were more numerous and higher in rank than the others. They came to Balaam and said to him, this is what Balak son of Zippor says. Let nothing keep you from coming to me, for I will greatly honor you and do whatever you ask me. So please come and put a curse on these people for me. But Balaam responded to the servants of Balak, If Balak were to give me his house full of silver and gold, I could not go against the command of the Lord my God to do anything small or great. Please stay here overnight as the others did, so that I may find out what else the Lord has to tell me. God came to Balaam at night and said to him, 
since these men have come to summon you, get up and go with them, but you must only do what I tell you. When he got up in the morning, Balaam saddled his donkey and went with the officials of Moab. But God was incensed that Balaam was going, and the angel of the Lord took his stand on the path to oppose him. Balaam was riding his donkey, and his two servants were with him. When the donkey saw the angel of the Lord standing on the path with a drawn sword in his hand, she turned off the path and went into the field. So Balaam hit her to return her to the path. Then the angel of the Lord stood in a narrow passage between the vineyards with a stone wall on either side. The donkey saw the angel of the Lord and pressed herself against the wall, squeezing Balaam's foot against it. So he hit her once again. The angel of the Lord went ahead and stood in a narrow place where there was no room to turn to the right or the left. When the donkey saw the angel of the Lord, she crouched down under Balaam. So he became furious and beat the donkey with his stick. Then the Lord opened the donkey's mouth, and she asked Balaam, What have I done to you that you have beaten me these three times? Balaam answered the donkey, You made me look like a fool. If I had a sword in my hand, I'd kill you now. But the donkey said, Am I not the donkey you've ridden all your life until today? Have I ever treated you this way before? No, he replied. Then the Lord opened Balaam's eyes, and he saw the angel of the Lord standing in the path with a drawn sword in his hand. Balaam knelt low and bowed in worship on his face. The angel of the Lord asked him, Why have you beaten your donkey these three times? Look, I came to oppose you because I consider what you are doing to be evil. The donkey saw me and turned away from me these three times. If she had not turned away from me, I would have killed you by now and let her live. Balaam said to the angel of the Lord, I have sinned, for I did not know that you were standing in the path to confront me. And now, if it is evil in your sight, I will go back. Then the angel of the Lord said to Balaam, Go with the men but you are to say only what I tell you. So Balaam went with Balak's officials. When Balak heard that Balaam was coming, he went out to meet him at the Moabite city on the Arnon border at the edge of his territory. Balak said to Balaam, did I not send you an urgent summons? Why didn't you come to me? Am I really not able to reward you? Balaam said to him, look, I have come to you, but can I say anything I want? I must speak only the message God puts in my mouth. So Balaam went with Balak, and they came to Kiriath Hazoth. Balak sacrificed cattle, sheep, and goats, and sent for Balaam and the officials who were with him. In the morning, Balak took Balaam and brought him to Bamoth Baal. From there, he saw the outskirts of the people's camp. Our Psalms for today are Psalms 62 and 63. In Psalm 62, David encourages us to place our trust in God alone. And in Psalm 63, he shows how the Lord satisfies his longings for him. Psalm 62. I am at rest in God alone. My salvation comes from him. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my stronghold. I will never be shaken. How long will you threaten a man? Will all of you attack as if he were a leaning wall or a tottering fence? They only plan to bring him down from his high position. They take pleasure in lying. They bless with their mouths, but they curse inwardly. Rest in God alone, my soul, for my hope comes from him. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my stronghold. I will not be shaken. My salvation and glory depend on God, my strong rock. My refuge is in God. Trust in him at all times, you people. Pour out your hearts before him. God is our refuge. Common people are only a vapor. Important people, an illusion. Together on a scale, they weigh less than a vapor. Place no trust in oppression or false hope in robbery. 
If wealth increases, don't set your heart on it. God has spoken once. I have heard this twice. Strength belongs to God, and faithful love belongs to you, Lord, for you repay each according to his works. Psalm 63. God, you are my God. I eagerly seek you. I thirst for you. My body faints for you in a land that is dry, desolate, and without water. So I gaze on you in the sanctuary to see your strength and your glory. My lips will glorify you because your faithful love is better than life. So I will bless you as long as I live. At your name, I will lift up my hands. You satisfy me as with rich food. My mouth will praise you with joyful lips. When I think of you as I lie on my bed, I meditate on you during the night watches because you are my helper. I will rejoice in the shadow of your wings. I follow close to you. Your right hand holds on to me. But those who intend to destroy my life will go into the depths of the earth. They will be given over to the power of the sword. They will become a meal for jackals. But the king will rejoice in God. All who swear by him will boast, for the mouths of liars will be shut. Now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. Thank you so much for spending this time with me in God's word today. May the Lord richly bless your day. And I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow.